Welcome to the Cabrera Lab podcast. Hey. Hey. How you doing? I'm doing awesome. You're doing awesome? Yeah. That's great. I was thinking the other day we were visiting a friend in the hospital, if you yes. remember. Yes. And we ended up down in the hospital cafeteria for a few moments. Oh, my goodness. And we both noticed <laughs> the menu items on the hospital, Obviously. fried chicken, mac and cheese, you name it. Fried, <laughs> fried, fried, pasta, 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 yeah. all kinds of things. Uh, and I also remembered a little while ago you were talking about, you know, goop, yeah. the concept of goop at our, I think it was at our breakfast table one day. Because mm-hmm. I was, yeah. Goops. Goops. Yep. And the many kinds of goop. So I'm curious, what, what, let's, what is goop? Unpack goop. How is it, what is it? Why is it so popular? How's it become like a major industry? How should we be careful about it? Why you can't? Well, so goop, uh, so, the, well, the story that at the hospital was we went down to the cafeteria and we, and it's all goop. The whole menu was goop. There wasn't any non-goop. And, um, and then literally as you're walking out, so that's on one TV screen as the menu for the whole hospital. And then uh, as you're walking out is another TV screen that's like advertising uh, for diabetes treatments and stuff like that. So you're just like, you know, here's where we get them on, on this side of the equation and here's where we get them on the other side of the equation. So um, for me, I'm pretty like, I'm pretty ADD, as you know, I am and, uh, and, and, um, and a little, uh, you know, on the spectrum. And so I need like really basic, my brain needs like really basic rules to follow. So Goop was something that I created to create a very hard and fast rule for myself. Um, because there's so many options out there, right? There's so many different types of food and there's so many, especially when you go to restaurants, I mean, it's nuts. Uh, right. <clears throat> so Goop was something that I created as a concept, which just means that um, any anything that any time in its lifetime has been kind of in a liquid goopy form, right, right? of some kind. Because I saw this, I saw this thing on TV, like they were making chicken McNuggets. Yes, I remember that. And it was like literally goop coming out of a machine. Like it looked like yes. it looked just vile and, it was like this pink goop and, and jelly beans too they yeah jelly beans well. i mean anything. I remember that and so if you think about all like all breads are at one point in time goop all candy is at one point in time goop mm-hmm. so um i just don't eat goop i very very rarely eat goop except on cheat days i might eat a little i you know i have a love of sub sandwiches but we are, so that but the Earl of Sandwich. But that's on cheat days, like, you know, I'll have that. But otherwise, I, I try to stay away from all goop as goop. much as possible. Goop in the food category, meaning things mm-hmm. that were overly processed, manufactured, yes. liquefied, and yeah. put in a tube to become the shape of something else, yes. like a chicken McNugget. Or, or a, bread. You know, bread I mean, the candy. chicken McNugget is like extreme goop, you yeah. know, or candy is extreme goop, or right. like... Just all the insane, you know, like Pringles. I don't even know. Is that a real chip? Like, I don't even know what that is. It's 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 pressed potato. (laughs) So, (laughs) you know, there's like extreme goop like that. And but then there's lesser goop that is also just goop, which is like breads and things like that. So I do like a piece. I stay. I mean, bread's delicious. There's no doubt. But uh, yeah, you know, I just find that I don't feel good when I eat goop. And I and it's not that I don't love goop like everybody else i mean it it, there's a reason we love goop it's because it's been designed to pass go past our brain you know and and just meet our our needs to want to yeah eat goop goop at least in the food form has become a massive billion dollar industry and you know, I think it was you. That, I think it was you that were talking to me about the properties of sugars and yes. simple carbs, and how with rats they became more addicted to sugar yeah. than they did like I don't yeah, know, cocaine or something. Like, I yeah. We'd have to sugar look up the rat story, <laughs> the rat study. Sugar is the biggest drug right. on the market today, and for sure. And it's a, it's a, it's a, yeah, it's a sugar. 
Well, so I mean, sugar is the one. Yeah, if I if I remember correctly, like you know, President of the United States, pretty pretty powerful, and uh, and um, during the Obama years, uh, Michelle Obama went, you know, was going to go and get kids in shape, and like you know, she went out and said, "We're going to you know fight the sugar industry, and then we're going to get kids in shape," and then like a couple weeks later, it was like. We're just going to get kids in shape, you know, like <laughs> we're not going to fight the sugar industry. It was, you know, so that's, yeah. there's a lot of power, uh, you know, they'll probably shut down this podcast or something, who knows. Uh, but the, uh, there's a lot of power in the sugar industry and. and uh, right. I remember there was a, I don't know if it was Barbara Walters or some, one of those sort of nighttime news interviewee things. And they, it was before she switched away from sugar and into movement and mm -hmm. they were showing, she was going through the aisle of a grocery store. Yeah. And she pulled up like a bottle of ketchup, right? Which- Sugar. Yeah, but most people think of it as just like tomatoes, tomatoes. and it's good for you. And she said, look how many grams of sugar in this ketchup. And then well, she that's pulled the up something that's else. Well, that's the problem is all these, a lot of these foods, you know, they just put sugar into them because because all this goop is cheap, right? So mm -hmm. it's, it's like goop is basically a feedlot for humans. Right. It's just like we feed our dogs like kibble and we feed cattle like, you know, it's it's all goop. It's it's the cheapest way to feed a lot of humans. And so then if you add like if you take all this goop and you add sugar to it, then humans are going to like it. And it's uh, going to taste better. It's going to taste good. And, you know, and, and then we can get you addicted to it. And then it just seems very normal. So so I've expanded on goop. So there's, you know, just all kinds of food goops. Yeah. But then there's um, intravenous goops, which is like, you know, all the liquid goops. Uh, so then there's all the sodas. That's just liquid goop. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, and now now I even see it as like the, you know, there's there's mental goop out there, you know, like the National Enquirer or, what, you know, whatever um, silly shows Pablum. and pablum that we just consume. It's easily consumable high caloric not nutritional not nutritional right i mean whether it's mental mental goop or liquid goop or mm -hmm. goop goop it's just goop and it's terrible for you well but that means and that includes things that are on television and all kinds of other stuff you know yeah every once in a while i watch a again show. yeah like yeah. every once in a while yeah goop I'm not saying that I, I don't understand. like goop. I know. I, I you know, I, I, but I, I will say that the more I've trained myself to, to sort of think of goop as a disgusting thing, the less I care about it. Right. Right. So I've, I've just trained. I've first of all, I needed like a simple rule, like a, a kind of a black and white. Yeah. There's goop, a very few places where I'm black and white, but that's one of them. And. That I needed that just for me. I'm not suggesting other people need to be black and white about it. But for me, it's like there's goop and there's not goop. And uh, and and then and then I I needed to kind of change my mental model about goop to to find it disgusting and displeasing. So I I paid particular notice to how I felt when I eat, ate goop. Yes. Because when you're eating it, you feel good. But then after you eat it, you don't feel so good, right? And so really focus on, oh, I feel terrible and like almost play it up a little bit. And and essentially you train your brain to hate goop. And to not crave it. And not You train your it. body. Actually, yeah, you train your body and your brain to, to, to sort of. Yeah. Because anybody like who has given up sugar yeah. will tell you that it's tough and you have headaches it's and it's tough. Yeah. And then there's a moment where you're like, you're free of it. And you no longer crave simple <clears throat> sugars like you know processed sugars. You you crave sweetness, but you yeah. don't have to. You don't necessarily have that craving for sugar. Well, and you can also also I find that like you, what your body craves, your mind converts into marketing. Yeah. So your body is like, hey, I need some carbs, you know, some 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 sugar, some natural sugars or something. The body just needs some carbs, right? Right. And. And your brain's like, oh, I need candy, mm -hmm. you know, or I need bread or I need goop. But actually, your body's like, an apple's fine, mm -hmm. you know, like fruit, fruit, will fruit will work. In fact, fruit's better because it's got the fiber and things like that. So yep. 
So your body, your brain is sort of deciding that you want this or that, but your body needs something uh, really much more basal, like yeah. carbs, proteins, fats, you know, those kinds of things. Well, I'm glad you and brought nutrients. up nutrients. Yeah, no, I'm glad you brought up the brain because yeah. as you're as we're talking about this, it becomes very clear to me that goop is an, is in itself. It's a manipulation. Totally. It's a manipulation of our our thinking, our minds, however you want to say it. It reminds me of that story when we were, remember we were standing in, in Dick's mm -hmm. oh at the, yeah. we were like at the checkout and they yeah. have that end cap of, I mean, sporting goods, of candy bars and sodas so and Gatorade. Do you, you remember that? Yeah. It reminds me of that. Yeah, I was standing. God, that was such a. It was such a hard thing to watch because I, I was, I was standing at the line, yeah. right? And they, and all these stores have, um, they have kind of a at the checkout. They and it's low for the kids so that they can get the kids addicted to goop of some kind, mental yeah. goop, you know, food goop, all kinds of stuff. So they have all those things right as you're checking out. Kind of like a feedlot. So as they're as they're funneling you through the feedlot, then then they get you, you like at the analogy. at the canal where you're surrounded by goop, and they put it low and they put all the things that kids like, you know, at that. So this little kid, and he was he was a little bit overweight for for his age, you know, mm -hmm. and um, and his mom, and you could tell like you know they probably weren't. They weren't sort of doing really well, uh, you know, but the mom was really trying. And the kid says, uh, the kid says, hey, mom, can I have a, a, a soda, a Coke? Because mm -hmm. there's Coke and all kinds of stuff. And she goes, no, sweetie. And you could tell, like, she it was hard for her to say no because she want, yeah. parents want to give their kids what they want, right? So she says... No, sweetie, let's not do that. That's that's a lot of sugar and, you know, stuff. And so you're like, yes, yes, she did it. You know, she nailed it. That was right. And and then he goes, okay, can I have a Gatorade? And she's like, mm, okay. <laughs> and you're like, ah, oh, man, she did. Like these... They don't stand a chance. Like we, we don't stand a chance because there are so many people with so much sophisticated marketing and sophisticated degrees. I mean, degrees in neuromarketing, where they're they're understanding the way the brain works and understanding marketing and putting those things together. And then you have a a, a host of highly paid people that work at these places that are manipulating whole populations of people to do things. Mm -hmm without them even knowing. So this mom is literally trying to do the absolute best thing for her kid, exactly what a parent should do. And she tried. Mm -hmm. And then it just, it just, the wheels came off. And, and you know, now the kid's right. drinking a, a, a Gatorade. But the marketing is brilliant, right? Because Gatorade is a sports drink. It's yes. athletic. It's bullshit. It's goop. <laughs> it's liquid goop. <laughs> it's liquid goop. Yeah, I mean, and all, I'm not picking on Gatorade. Yeah. I mean, all these all these drinks mm -hmm. are liquid goop. It's not just Gatorade; it's all of them. And then, of course, then we have the, you know, the the fake sugar drinks, mm -hmm. which your body which doesn't is, process is very well. Even worse, right? Like, I mean, we I as if we could have designed something worse than goop, but we did, right? Because well, then your body thinks it's sugar. Mm -hmm. And then responds as if it's sugar, but you're just like mess still you're just sugar. tweaking your body yeah, and still crave sugar. I mean, people would think I'm insane when our children ask for a diet soda. I literally say, I think it would be better for you to have a real soda. Yeah. Because the sugar in a soda is actually right. not as as many chemicals and it's treated, you know, it's different. Yeah. Your body you're basically recognizes. gaslighting your body. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> it's you're terrible. like, I'm going to gaslight my body now and be like, yeah, you you, I just gave you sugar. And yeah. it's like, you did? Okay. All right. Good. <laughs> well, I want to I wanna pick at that a little bit. So we were talking about goop as a manipulation. And you were talking it about is. the brain being convinced differently. And I was thinking about that mom at the checkout. And if you think about, well, how, how A, we should care about this. And, and B, how do we sort of inoculate ourselves against that 
moment where you're manipulated because what's happened to her is somebody in her brain without her knowing it made a relationship between Gatorade and yeah. sports and health. Yeah. But the reality is Gator I mean Gatorade's great for for its purpose to for replace electrolytes. Yeah, sure. But it's, and if you just ran did a yes. whole game worth of activities Gatorade's and, and great. you know some yeah. that's fine but right. So I guess the question is thinking about goop. Yeah. Why should we be thinking about goop? Like why well, we? originally, like I said, I created goop just to solve a problem for myself. Right. And it was just like, you know, food goop. But now I see it's it's actually a much broader concept. It's goop everywhere. I mean, there's TV, television goop, there's mm-hmm. TikTok goop, there's social media goop. And and it really comes down to it's it's sort of pablum, right? It's like it's like easy to consume, low nutritional value, high calorie stuff. So, you know, you spend an hour watching it and you'll never get that hour back yeah. and it didn't serve you in any real way. And, uh, you know, that's goop. So there's a lot of goop out there. And the part that and we do this with our grad students, right? I mean, mm-hmm. like th- these phones, the phones oh. are like a direct it's like an IV, you know, like mm-hmm. you've, you've now attached it to your arm mm-hmm. and now the the. The goop industry has a direct connect to you 24 7, 24 hours a day. They have a direct connect to you and they're serving up goop. They're serving up goop. Right. And we need to be very cautious of that. We need to be, we individually need to be like, you know what? When, if I'm going to eat goop or consume goop, I'm going to do it consciously. I'm going to do it. With with great awareness and consciousness for a particular purpose and reason, and I'm not going to just do it like mindlessly. Right, because like I mean, we've talked to our kids a lot about electron handheld electronics mm-hmm. and how they become, without them realizing it, kind of addicted because they're drawing their attention. Totally, and they're designed to draw their attention. 100%. And then there's all the ads inside of stuff, which are also designed to get their attention on stuff that's probably not good for them, like candies and things like that. And I mean, I guess it's about. But you don't want to be sorry. You don't want to be a a luddite. No, right. Not that I have any issues with luddites, but I mean, like in the in the tent in the. Well, same, meaning same kids goes. have to be part of. They got to be of part norms. of society, right? So they, yeah. they, you know, we're not. I think it's a balance. It's a middle. Yeah. A middle way, right? Which is like it's not that you're against phones. We always say to our kids, like, don't let your phone. You use your phone. Don't let your phone use you. Right. Right. You use your phone. Don't let your phone use you. Right. And I think that's the important part. Right. And I guess if I were listening to us right now, I'd be like, well, okay, great. How do I actually, how do I teach somebody to do that? Like, how did, how did we get our kids? So, right, awareness. we got them to think about it. Pause. Awareness. I mean, it really is just awareness. It's metacognition. It's, it's recognizing, oh, I'm just mindlessly scrolling, you know, mm-hmm. literally. And, and can we all do that? Yeah, absolutely. Like, none of us are not susceptible to this. This is, I'm not saying like, oh, I never do. I'm saying it is very addictive. It is very addictive and it's addictive for on purpose, right? There are very, very smart people with PhDs and I mean, we train them, right? <laughs> we train them and they go out in the world and then a team of people with PhDs and all these different topics, neuro, neuroscience and, and marketing and blah, blah, blah. They and technology, they are you taking these teams, paying them a crazy amount of money to essentially have direct access to us and our children. Imagine, yeah. imagine back in the day, if some whole team full of people showed up at your house, knocked on your door, and said, "Hey, we just want to have a you know an hour chat with your children." You, there's yeah. no way you'd be like, yeah. "Get out!" Yeah. What are you talking about? Yeah, you'd freak out. You'd freak out. Right. But now they have to, they have more access than than you do as a parent. It's interesting because there's a lot of talk about and research on sort of media literacy and how you help kids become sort of inoculated against some of the, for lack of a better word, manipulations for their attention or even like their parents' credit card to go and buy something Mm -hmm. online. And 
And I think part of that effort is really about what you were talking about, developing that awareness. So if I'm on, if a kid's on the internet or you're on the internet or whatever, do we still call it the internet? I think they call it the internets. <laughs> I'm not the tech person. But I mean, you should be questioning what's the being- The World Wide Web. <laughs> on my AOL account. On your AOL account. <laughs> On your dial-up AOL account. So you've got mail. Oh, my God. I don't actually remember that. <laughs> I know. That's terrible. Remember that awful sound when you used to, the, it'd be like. <laughs> but what I'm trying to get at is, um, <laughs> you just totally take me off track. I'm the not ADD one, and you completely take me off track. That's good. Um, I was thinking about, because I've read a lot about this, and we obviously have been paying attention because we've raised three children who mm. have gone through <clears throat> the gauntlet the gauntlet of social media which we never had as kids and phones which and we never schools. had in schools and all of that and society i mean i and i goop. guess and goop the gauntlet of goop the gauntlet the gauntlet of goop that is what it is it's the a charity. gauntlet of goop and we have to get our kids through it all kinds of goop all kinds goop. of goop liquid goop all of it media the goop. Gauntlet of goop oh my god that's hilarious <laughs> It's like an obstacle course yeah, that they have to run through. It is literally an obstacle. It is like a challenge course for children, for young people. And parents are like desperately trying to get their kids to right. adulthood alive, you know. And and that doesn't even include all the drug goop. Uh, let's uh, right? that's like, another That's podcast. another whole thing. Like the, the drugs are so... Here's the thing. This is important because it relates to goop. <clears throat> Our brain is not designed to deal with some of these things. It, it is overwhelming our brain. Like, our brain's not really designed to not like Fruit Loops. Fruit Loops are crazy cool. They're delicious. They're delicious, right? And our brain's like, of course they're delicious. And of course I'm going to choose that over potato, you know, or whatever. <laughs> like, you El get real? potato. Right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> and it, is it is potato, right? <laughs> no, and so and like or Fruit Loops, right? Yeah. So, but th but that was like you know I can yeah. kind of say no to Fruit Loops, but now it's like you go and you get a thing that's like fifteen hundred calories, and it's the most delicious thing in the whole world, and you, you like your brain's not good. But now, like in our day, we had pot, we had Coke, you know, you could say no to those things. You mean and like marijuana? That's what I'm saying. Oh, like, we had some drugs. basic drugs, right? <laughs> now the drugs are, like, overwhelming the brain. Oh. The, the brain cannot, cannot not want these drugs, right? Oh. You could, I think they're just, they're, we've, we've engineered these drugs oh. to the point where your, your brain has no control. So it's not like the people that are getting addicted to these drugs that are out there, some of which are, you know, like Oxycontin and, and things that are that are prescription drugs. Yeah. They are so powerful and so overwhelming the brain that they, that that humans of all kinds, I mean, you don't have to be like an addictive personality to get addicted to I these see. things. You see what I'm saying? It's yeah. it's overwhelming, just normative people can't deal with with it. Well, you know, I just saw yesterday our county health department is launching an anti vaping campaign yeah, the vapes. for teens. Oh my God. That's what I was just thinking. Because vaping, <laughs> vaping is so that's addictive. just, that's chemicals, right? Yeah. There's not even anything it's so addictive. natural in there. Yeah. It's just literally chemical. And I, my understanding is the guy that developed vapes was trying to actually make a safer cigarette and he made like a way more dangerous one. Like vapes are so bad for you. I thought it's he was doing it to help people quit smoking. Yeah, basically. But it actually It's happens. actually way worse like and way, 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 way more addictive. Yeah. And your brain, and then they add like the flavors and all this kind of stuff. And your brain just, it's overwhelmed by the addictive properties of these things. And I think that's the same for all new, all, all these new kinds of goop are so addictive. They're so addictive that are they are overwhelming the, the sort of reasonability of our brain to, to say no. And so that's why you see a, a much greater proportion of the population just succumbing to these to these addictions. Okay, so then the big question is what do we do? How do we <clears throat> how do we armor ourselves and our kids to not fall prey to all of that? To to Yeah, I think I mean I think it, it it's metacognition. 
I, I know that sounds like the nerdiest thing that a human could say, but it is metacognition. Like metacognition just means awareness. Just be more aware. Just just be like, ask questions about yes. what you're doing. Why am I doing what I'm doing? Why have I been scrolling? Like just have that metacognitive moment where you go, what am I doing here for 45 minutes? What have I been doing? Right? And, and what you, have I missed? What have I missed? As a result yeah, of doing yeah. that. I right? mean, just like just that ability to have a metacognitive moment can change the game. Yeah. Why am I doing what I'm doing? Like my dad, when we were kids, I'd come out, you know, like there were all these brands. It's embarrassing some of the brands that, that were popular, but it was like Izod was really popular. Oh, if yeah. you had an alligator on I your shirt, Izod. you were cool. OP, uh, Ocean Pacific, if you had a little OP on your shorts, that was cool. And I'd come out with stuff like that. And my dad would say, they paying you? And it was just like, it was like a little metacognitive moment of, why are you advertising for these people? Right. Like, why are you the ve their vehicle? They haven't done anything for you. You paid for the shirt. Mm -hmm. So they're not doing anything for you, right? Why are you their vehicle? You're like their billboard. You're their billboard. They're moving and the billboard. they're not paying you. You just paid them. You just paid them. A lot. To be their billboard, right? Yeah. So it was just like these little metacognitive moments where where you go, oh, yeah, that's interesting. And, you know, I probably ignored him for years, but it eventually kind of gets in, you know, at Outward Bound and other places. And I think it's true in parenting. We always said, you know, the lessons that you're teaching your students, they're, they're going to learn like five years from now. So don't get discouraged yeah. if they're not learning it right away. You keep teaching it. You keep teaching it. You keep teaching yeah. it. And then like your kids will come home from college and, that, you know, they'll be like, you know, you've got, you, there's that classic story, right? Which, oh, the the kid who What's moves the, to college. The kid who goes to college, he just thinks his dad is the dumbest. Yes, yes. Saw it under the sun. And he, and he goes to college and comes back four years later. And he says, you know, it's amazing how much his dad has learned in four years. Like, but, uh, well, that's a bad joke. <laughs> but... That's okay, because you're a dad. I'm a dad. You can make yeah, dad jokes. I can make dad jokes with the best of them. That is true. With the best We of should them. have a dad yeah. joke throwdown as a podcast. Off. That reminded me of, um, also, I was. I don't remember who I was talking to, but you realize like 80% of the lessons that your parents taught you the minute you become a parent. 100%. And you're like, oh my God, now oh. I understand it all. <laughs> like that's what, he was, that's what he was getting at. Like, oh. like, oh, that only took me 30 years to <laughs> Or, or when you that. get your first job yeah. and you're in your first dollar yeah. and you're like, oh, that was harder than yeah, I thought. Yeah, that was way harder. Not that anybody earns a single dollar anymore, but you know what I mean. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, so let's wrap up our goop our goop talk. Yeah. So I'm good at this. I'll summarize. In summary, <laughs> You're in summary, goop is all around us. Yeah, it's like goop this, is all around, around us. us. That's on love is all around us. Look it up. So anyway, the point is, it's all around us. Goop is and, all around us. And I guess the point is, we should be looking for it. We should be looking for things, being more aware, like. Just questioning, you know, yeah. what is the relationship that's being made for me? Is this actually good for me? Is it a waste of my time? What's the opportunity cost? Totally of goop. To the things I'm doing. Yeah. Nutritionally, mentally. Yeah. All of it. Yeah. The best thing you can do is question. Yeah. Question those things. <clears throat> make decisions for yourself. Realize when things are, like, actually a manipulation of facts. But I think we got to take it further, which is, like, Goop is all around us and we got to be aware of it, but goop is also part of us, yes. right? We've been, we've been programmed into goop. That's heady. <laughs> I'm serious. Like, what does that mean? It's like, like program. Coke is life. Oh, well, if I'm enjoying, if I'm enjoying oh. my life and, and it's hot day and, you know, then I need a Coke. Coke is friendship. Coke is, you know, all these different brands have programmed into us there's a, a fantastic book by a guy named paulo paulo freire who is a brazilian who wrote a book called pedagogy of the oppressed yeah and that book has been banned in in multiple uh, uh countries which means we should read it. which means you should read it <laughs> like any book that's getting banned you should that be like yeah. the first one you read so it, it but what what he talked about was that oftentimes people who are oppressed 
-hmm. actually take on the pedagogy of that oppression, meaning they they actually become the, even if you remove the re oppressor. Mm -hmm. So now the oppressor is no longer in that person's life. The person has adopted so much of that oppressive te those oppressive teachings that that oppression is still maintained. Meaning I still hear sort of the voice or feel, feel so like I'm carrying it with me. Yes. Right? Like you're yes. saying Coke is like. You've gotten programmed. Um, That's what happened to the little kid and the mom, right? They got yeah, programmed. That was inside something. them to believe something. Gatorade is the sports. Yeah. Or yeah. frosted flakes so are great. goop is all around us, including inside of us. Well, and that's the most, it's been programmed. Us. It's been programmed, the concept of goop. And so we should question so where those have, thoughts come we from. We need to look for that goop bias in the goop gauntlet. We pay attention to the goop around us. I think that that is a good place to wrap. Yeah. We live in Goopville, and we are the mayor of Goopville. Thank you.